I feel like a lot of people don't know what they want to do. And mm-hmm. I think there's a lack of clarity issue with mm-hmm. a lot of people. And also just like, how do, how do I get started? So yeah. you had a PR firm, right? And then you saw the opportunity. So you were within your zone of genius, let's say. Mm-hmm. I guess what would be your advice for someone that's trying to still figure out their zone of genius um, and they want to start in consulting? So I would say this. You want to evaluate your gifts. Everybody has such amazing gifts. And I think sometimes our gifts are invisible. Like we don't label it a gift, right? Curating community is one of my gifts. I have done it literally 10 times. One of my, one of my communities was 500,000 people. One was 15,000 people. One is my a current community that I've created is 2,500 people. I curate communities. That's a gift. I can monetize it or not monetize it, but I'm just saying that someone probably wouldn't see that as a gift. They're like, oh, that's something you can do. Well, Mm -hmm. yes, it is something I can do, but I'm gifted in it, right? So I want you to look at what are things that come really, really easy to you. It's, It's innate to you. It's part of you. You love it, right? You do it really well. It's so invisible to you sometimes. Those are gifts. But when you can put a label on it and go, okay, these are five of my gifts. Now you can start to see a pattern and you can start to pull them forward in this entrepreneurship. I know that in my journey, I was really good at PR marketing. That was a, I didn't, I, I didn't have a degree in it. I did have a little bit of training in it, but way more than my training, I was gifted in it, right? So storytelling and pitching someone for a media story um, and telling people stories online, offline, that was just, that's a gift, right? And I knew how to monetize that into a marketing agency. So I want you, one, to look at what your gifts are, then look at what your skills are, maybe what you went to college for or a skill set or a degree or a certificate that you have. That's skill sets, right? And then the third set is passions and problems you want to solve, right? I love entrepreneurship. I don't coach corporate. I don't coach anything outside of entrepreneurship. That's my jam, right? So that I think you, if you're going to coach or consult or something like that, you've got to find a sector or a thing that you love, right? And you want to solve. I want to solve entrepreneur problems because I believe in entrepreneurship, right? And the more of us there are, the better. I just, I believe in entrepreneurship more than corporate America. So I'm like, I'm a champion, right? I'm a champion for it. So that's, those are the three, you know, look at your gifts, look at your skill sets, and then look at the problems you want to solve. Write those down in like on a piece of paper, three columns, write those down. And what you're going to see is you're going to have an insight or a breakthrough. You're going to see patterns. And then you can start to look at how do I monetize that? How do I create this into a company? Right. And unfortunately, I think people create companies that excite them, but don't solve a problem. Hello, I'm telling you right now, stop. (laughs) Don't do that. Um, you, I know that you're passionate about that thing or you love that thing, but if, if people aren't going to pay for it, you're going to go out of business. So we've got to, it's the mixture of the two, right? My biggest learning mistake was that um, I had the idea if I build it, they will come without doing any market research, without seeing if anyone was willing to pay, you know, long story short, 60K in credit cards, just holding this thing for, you know, what I was trying to sell. No one wanted it. So, yeah, definitely, definitely ask your audience, ask your clientele, make sure there's a market fit. Um, I love that. That was so good. Before we hop into systems, because it's something that I want to talk about personally, and I think it'll help a lot of our audience, I want to talk about a maybe a learning lesson because you've been in entrepreneurship mm-hmm. for a while now, and we all know it's a roller coaster, right? Yeah. So was there a time where it's like, dang, this is going super bad, or I took a big, I won't say failure, but a learning lesson, and walk us through what that looked like? Because I believe a lot of podcasts, a lot of social media, it's all highlights. 
Mm -hmm. for me, I learned the most. And I feel like, like you're so much further ahead of where I'm at, but me listening to someone's story of, Hey, yeah, I did have some failures or learning lessons along the way. That makes me just feel good. And like, okay, failure, a learning lesson is part of the journey to success. So it's whatever you want to share. I want to hear it. (laughs) Failure. Okay. Failing, failing a thing um, is part of entrepreneurship. We just call it fail forward. It's all about lessons. You're not a failure. We're going to uncollapse those, right? Failing and I'm a failure are two different things, right? Um, So when we try something, it might be a marketing tactic. It might be a new division in your business or a new, a new business and it flops. Okay. Lesson, right? No better, do better, no better, do better, no better, do better. One of my mantras. And so when you have a mindset of learning the lesson and failing forward, um, I think most successful people are going to tell you most of their lessons, they got to the success because most of their lessons were the, the gold. That's where the gold is, the lessons in the failing, failing, right? So there's, oh, there, listen, I have failed more than I have succeeded. <laughs> there's because I'm also a risk taker. I'll try something and go, Oh, that didn't work. Right. And I'm going to grab the lesson and I'm going to move on. And I'm going to try. And I think it's really important to just mention, like you can't be successful without taking risk. So it is evident that you're going to fail at something in this journey. I just want people to know that. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. And again, that mindset is the thing that's going to trip you up. That smallness is going to be like, see, you suck. (laughs) <laughs> you shouldn't be in business. You are a horrible leader. I mean, I'm telling you that smallness is nasty. You got to turn that down. One of the most empowering pieces of advice I can give you is you've got to control your mindset. That smallness is out to sabotage you and you've got to put it in its place every day. Shut it down and listen to your greatness that knows that you will figure this out, knows that your highest self will prevail. Um, but you know, I'll tell you, I've had lots of fail, failing moments, lots of mistakes, but I'll tell you the biggest, um, you know, the most uh, failing moment I had with the biggest consequence was, um, back in my first business. Uh, so I had had that business for four years and, uh, at 20, about 27, 28, I had a minor stroke and I was working myself to death. And I was doing 15 hours a day. I was saying yes to every client because of my mindset was, oh God, maybe there's not a client behind this one. So I'm going to accept everyone. It was, I was in the most toxic mindset of scarcity, which then drives bad choices. And so I was working, I was saying yes to everybody. I was working way too hard. I had no self-care, which just was uh, literally mind, body, spirit were at zero (laughs) and a minor stroke was the consequence. And I was very lucky that I could do speech therapy and learn how to speak again. And now I make a living speaking, but I'm telling you, God, it was, I call it my blessed interruption because it put me on my knees and I really had to reevaluate my life and my direction. And really within a few months is when that knock at the door came and said, we want to buy your business. And it was my out of that business. And I was very lucky to sell that and learn, um, you know, being that, that consult them in, in that new business. And then I can move on to this business. But when I moved on, here was my lesson. I call it CEO self-care and it is the most important thing in entrepreneurship. It's as important as your funding, your marketing plan is your CEO self-care plan. And everybody that works with me is required to have a CEO self-care plan because here's what entrepreneurship will do. It will eat everything up. It'll eat your marriage up. It'll eat your mindset, your body, (laughs) everything up because without boundaries and without that self-care plan, it, it just wants to drive, right? It's like a dog on a bone. It just wants to drive. You, the CEO, have to put the margins and the self-care and 
the trips and the travel and the good sleep. I'm a huge advocate, eight hours, non-negotiable. I am totally non-negotiable around my self-care. I run three businesses and I don't work more than 30 hours a week. A week. And I do that because I want my self-care and I want my marriage. <laughs> and I, I want to have fun in life too, right? So I'm telling you, self-care, you, we have four tanks on the back of our back. We have spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional. Those tanks are being used every day, right? They're, they're being at different levels. They're being used and drained. We have to refuel them all the time. And that's what keeps me vibrant and going because I'm constantly refueling those four tanks. But most entrepreneurs, they drain them and then they're surviving off of literally an empty tank and then they get burnt out. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time. And I see marriages and diseases happen all the time because of it.